മൊഡ്യൂൾ നയൻറ്റീൻ കൈ സ്ക്വയർ ഡിസ്ട്രിബ്യൂഷൻ ആൻഡ് ടെസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് സിഗ്നിഫിക്കൻസ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ കൈ സ്ക്വയർ ഡിസ്ട്രിബ്യൂഷൻ സെക്ഷൻ വൺ കൈ സ്ക്വയർ ഡിസ്ട്രിബ്യൂഷൻ ആൻഡ് കൈ സ്ക്വയർ ടെസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ഇൻഡിപെൻഡൻസ് കൈ സ്ക്വയർ ഡിസ്ട്രിബ്യൂഷൻ ഈസ് വൺ ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് എ പ്രോബിലിറ്റി ഡിസ്ട്രിബ്യൂഷൻ യു നോ ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഫോർ ദ കണ്ടിന്യൂസ് ഡേറ്റ ആൻഡ് ദിസ് ഈസ് എ സ്പെഷ്യൽ കേസ് ഓഫ് ഗാമ ഡിസ്ട്രിബ്യൂഷൻ so as you can see here it depends upon uh, you know it's a shape parameter gamma distribution is a shape parameter here it depends on the degree of freedom so as if you have small degree of freedom that means small sample size then it is distinctly l shaped distribution while when your degree of freedom increases it becomes a little bit more peaked uh, uh, around the the right side of the distribution so it depends upon only depends upon the uh degree of freedom and more than that like gamma distribution this is also always positive so basically it's if the the chi square is very high then the p value is going to be very low so that is what in a high degree of freedom samples so this distribution is very important because we use this distribution for two important statistical significant testing so one of this significant test is called chi square distrib- chi square pearson chi square test of independence of two categorical variables so pearson's test is for the analysis of the categorical data that is to test whether the two categorical variables are associated or correlated with that is a kind of a correlation while the other kind of test is known as chi square test of the goodness of fit of an observed data or distribution to the theoretically expected distribution that is also known as model so it is something like data and model fitting so also known as model fitting how good the fit is goodness of fit test this is also used to compare the means of the categorical variable so it's a kind of a regression test that is what we are going to do in a goodness of fit test that will be explained in the next section of this module so both these tests have set of assumptions which is universal assumptions include accurate data independent measurements random observations as i told you this is the same assumptions in most of the statistical significance testing and there are no explicit assumptions about the distributions of the populations from which the samples came from as chi square distribution chi square test is a kind of a non parametric test so it doesn't make any assumptions about Uh, the distribution from which it came from it it basically depends upon the rank not really on the distribution so the first kind of chi square test is called chi square test of independence or by it is introduced by the carl pearson in 1900 so it's also known as pearson's chi square test or chi square test of independence this test is used to see the association between two categorical variables and in this test null hypothesis or ho is that variables are statistically independent there is no correlation or association between two categorical variables while alternative hypothesis or ha is the variables are statistically dependent that is the two contrasting hypothesis so intuition behind this test is that to summarize the differences between observed cell counts and expected cell counts what is expected if the ha that is alternate hypothesis is true so remember that in this kind of test expected cell count is derived from the observed one there is no model here it's just from the observed we are making the expected cell count so i will be explaining that later so the notation is that fo means observed frequency or the cell count that is what you actually got in your experiment you know or what you observed in the nature while expected is Uh, expected frequency that is calculated from that observed frequency itself there is no other uh, ratio or other models in this test you know it's just you have observed and you are calculating expected also from what you observed okay and also r is number of rows in the table while c is number of column r and c is used to calculate the degree of freedom that i will be explaining later so chi square test statistic the equation here is the chi square obtained is equal to sigma f o minus f v square divided by f e so f o minus f v squared upon f e is the chi square very simple formula all you have to do is calculate the f o calculate the f e then plug into this equation to get the chi square test statistic so that is what we are doing now let us look at the one example here 
if there is an association between uh, income level and happiness level or not. So whether people get more happy when their income level increase. So this is the study. So income and happiness as you see these are categorical variables. Right. So to find an association between two categorical variable, this test Pearson's, uh, you know, the chi-square test of independence is oftenly used. So imagine that we have done a questionnaire survey and obtained the results as given below. So here you can see that the happiness level is the column while income level is the row. So these numbers are exact absurd frequency you know what you found no normalization nothing but exact empirical frequency is given there in these numbers so these are nothing but fo or absurd cell count or absurd frequencies let us do the row total and column total with overall total so that is very simple operation you can uh, copy paste that into an excel sheet and you can uh, do that yourself so that is the first step in chi square test so to calculate, we have to now, uh, first step is to calculate the Fe or expected frequency. For that, you need to do the column total and row total, you know. So to calculate Fe, what we have to do is nothing but Fe is equal to row total multiplied by the column total divided by overall total. For each cell, you have to calculate it. You know, row total, that is basically the row, the total multiplied by the column total divided by the overall total so row and column total will be depends upon which cell you are taking in this chi square table so that depends upon that the fe will be differing in each of these tables for example look at this value here for the first cell where fo is 272 the row total is 615 and the column total is 911 so if you plug in the, this information into that earlier equation, then you are going to get Fe is equal to 615 multiplied by 911 divided by, you know, 295. So what is the answer? 2955. So the answer is 189.6 is the, the answer. So that is how you have to calculate. That is only for the first cell. Same thing I will have to repeat for the, the rest of the cells as well. So there are two ways conventionally you can uh, you can just uh, do this calculate Fe as in a bracket to the FO. FO is what you observed in bracket you can calculate it for each cell and write Fe, Fe, Fe. So that is one conventional method. While other method which I suggest to you is that just put that in one column. Everything the, the, the FO will be in one column, Fe will be the other column. You know that is much more simpler because the tabular way is better to comprehend. So just put this the, the column just like how we perform to calculate the variance and standard deviation and all. So now let us calculate the same thing FO and FE for the rest of the things in a systematic manner which I told you that it's better to go with a, a normal table like in, uh, you know in the Excel you can use it in the spreadsheet. So all you have to do is just copy paste the first line that is FO that is absurd frequencies. So first column is FO the next is FE then comes FO minus FE and then FO minus FE squared then finally FO minus FE squared divided by FE. So we have got you know five columns and everything is systematic. I told you how to calculate FE in earlier slide. So it's basically you know row total multiplied by column total divided by overall total. So that is way that, that way you can calculate the FE and then you can uh, use this in systematic manner. So finally, you get, you know, the, the, the chi-square test statistic, which is quite high in this case here. So next up is that what you got, the obtained chi-square, you are comparing with the critical chi-square value in the table, given a degree of freedom. So next step is to look up the chi-square table to find out the chi-square critical value for which we should know the degree of freedom and significance level which is normally you know 95 percentage confidence level means 0.05. So for chi-square test can be calculated by the following equation. The degree of freedom can be calculated by number of rows multiplied by number of columns. You know R multiplied by C. Uh, it's, it's not a simple r multiplied by c r minus 1 multiplied by c minus 1 so number of rows minus 1 multiplied by number of columns minus 1 so that is how we have to calculate the degree of freedom 
So these numbers means that of the actual data, you know, not including totals or label. Of course, you just have to look at the actual data, what the data, the observed frequency that you entered into the table. So of which how many columns are there and how many rows. Of course, there will be the last column is going to be the total, the row total, while the last row is going to be the row total. Do not include that in this calculation. For example, in our earlier example, there were basically degree of freedom is 3 minus 1, there are 3 columns, so 3 minus 1 multiplied by another 3 minus 1 because there are 3 rows in it. So 3 minus 1 is 2 multiplied by 2 is 4, so 4 is the degree of freedom for our data. So now the next step is just to look up the chi-square critical uh, chi-square table at this uh, degree of freedom, degree of freedom as I told you is 4 at 0 0.05 significance level the chi-square value is 9.488 that is the value. So as the table value the critical value is 9.488 is far less than our obtained chi-square test statistic which is 172.28. We can conclude that the p-value is less than 0 0.05 so whenever the table value is less then p-value must be less than 0 0.05 whenever the table value is more so the, the p-value must be more so in this case it is less than 0 0.05 that means statistically significant so therefore we reject the null hypothesis of independence of the two variables so and conclude that two variables are dependent or associated so there is a positive correlation between income level and happiness level so that is what uh, this uh, particular uh, test signifies. Moving towards right in the table, we can see that even at the significance level of 0 0.005, critical chi-square value is 14.86 which is still far less than the obtained chi-square uh, test statistic. Therefore, p-value must be even less than 0 0.005. So this is one handy way to find, you can guess how much would that be the p-value because you will never know exact p-value by using manual way. You need to do that in uh, software. So there is no support for the chi-square test in the Excel. The online calculator in the follow, uh, you know, uh, the following can be used instead. So you, there is a link I provided. You can use that one uh, to, to do this uh, uh, example. Remember that in our uh, example, uh, there is a positive correlation between income level and happiness level. So these two variables are associated. That is what the chi-square test say. But the correlation does not mean causation. I told you that in one of the earlier modules, probably in the first module itself. So this is a very, very important mistake that people make. So this test doesn't mean that income level is causing the increased happiness. It could be the reverse as well. Happiness level is causing the income level. More happy people tend to be smarter, study harder, and then they get a you know, better job. So which way is the causation? You can never make a conclusion from a correlation like a chi-square test of independence. So you need to perform in a more systematic manner in a, you know, in a regression, then only you will come to know which one is causing the effect on the other uh, or which is not. You know. Second example here is the homicide rate that is your assignment. So uh, question is that are the homicide rate uh, and the volume of gun sales are related, you know, for a sample of 25 cities. So are these two things are related, the gun sale and homicide rate, homicide in the sense of killing rates. So you can do this and uh, uh, turn in your assignment through the d discussion. Let us discuss about your answers there. Now, there is a correction here. The chi-square test statistic is sensitive to the small cell size, you know. So whenever any of your cell size is less than 5, people have come up with a modified equation that is called Yates correction for the continuity. So this equation is very similar to the uh, chi-square equation. Only difference is that FO minus FE whole square. So that is the chi-square test uh, nominator. Here, the numerator is F4 minus Fe, the absolute value minus 0 0.5, then you are squaring it, you know, so you are, you are subtracting 0 0.05 from the absolute value of the difference between F4 and Fe, that is the only difference here in the Yates correction. But most of the statisticians agree that the Yates correction overcorrects it and is not at all recommended. So. You know, this is not a good test at all, but people go for it, the Yates correction. 
Another interesting test is called Fisher's exact test for 2 into 2 contingency table that is so often used in a case control study. The best test is Fisher's exact test. So th this we are going to explain in module number 20. So in summary, the chi-square distribution is a special case of gamma distribution. It is symmetric and the values are always positive. Pearson's chi-square test of independence is used for non-parametric analysis of nominal data to test two categorical variables are associated or correlated. This test is a type of correlation. Most statisticians agree that the Yates correction for continuity to deal with the small sample sizes overcorrects it and is therefore not recommended. Thank you for watching.